the welcome all the honorable members, uh, the staff of the committee, the staff of uh, parliament, uh, management of uh, DTIC, and the uh, uh, officials of uh, the DTIC. Um, this morning we will be getting a briefing uh, from the department on their program too. Um, but uh, before that, uh, we'd like to start uh, on our members with the uh, adoption of the minutes, uh, given that uh, this is our uh, last meeting. Uh, I know uh, that uh, this afternoon we'll be having a, a plenary session. Uh, buses will be leaving at uh, half past 12. Uh, so we would like that by that time, we would have uh, uh, dealt uh, with and adopted the, the minutes. Is because it's a last meeting, so our next meeting will be next year uh, for this committee. Um, if I agree, then I will uh, request uh, Mr. Uh, to. Uh, are there no minutes before this uh, 22? I think there were minutes that uh, we, we deferred last meeting to today. I think should be the 15th, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Because the last week we could not adopt the minutes. Yes, um, you are correct, Chair. There is the minutes of the 15th. Um, and also the version that's currently being um, the version version is currently being projected is um yeah it's, it's for some reason it's got that changes so we, we we can't be um projecting this version it's the minutes of the 15th of november and the minutes of the 22nd chair yes mr bazia can you start with the ones one of the 15. Still looking for them. Is he connected? I don't see his name here. Yes, he is, she. Oh, okay. I'm just looking for a chair. Okay, maybe we, you can uh, fly to the one of the 22nd then in the meantime. So that uh, we deal with those. If you're still uh, struggling to get to find the one of the 15. Okay. Um, can, you can, can you scroll? Sorry, in this sorry. The, the change of the, 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 the can you just accept the change? Um, Leave it Tuesday, 22nd of November. Sorry, Chief. So, so, what are you asking it to do? Um, so, sorry, yes, I think I think um, Enrico corrected a typo because it, um, the minutes initially said the twenty first of November, but it should actually say the twenty second. So I'm just asking oh, to accept yeah. that change so that it doesn't um, we don't see tap changes um, on the projected minutes. Okay. Okay. Can you scroll down, uh, Mr. Bazia? Let's check uh, who was present.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bazi. That's a problem with the this is the Apple uh, uh, laptops. Uh, the print, the font is so uh, tiny. Um, are there any corrections, uh, uh, honorable members, that you'd like to make? Are there any omissions that you pick up? If not, can I call for the mover and the seconder for the adoption of the minutes of the 22nd? Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning, everybody. Chairperson, Honorable Mushodi, I move for adoption of the minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mushodi. Uh, is, is there any seconder for the adoption of the minutes of the 22nd of November, 2022? Those who are present. If there's none, then I'll uh, second the. No, Chair, I, I, I play the hand dangle, <laughs> then we're up. Honorable Dango and Honorable Dango apologized uh, last week because he. There was a, oh. there is his apology and that of uh, Honorable uh, Boshoff. No, oh, I uh, said, I said on, I've already said on, Jay. All right, I, I understand is... your, your challenge here. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for seconding the adoption of the minutes. And also, Honorable uh, Apleni. I see your hand is up, uh, Honorable Apleni. He's seconding the ministry. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Can we flight uh, the minutes of the 15, uh, Mr. Pazi? I hope you managed to get them. I'm just looking for it quickly, Che. Okay. I also look for them. I couldn't find them. I only found the one of the 22nd. It should be, I think, about the meeting uh, that we had uh, with uh, the DTIC uh, Department of uh, Economic Development in the Eastern Cape, ECDC, and the uh, Buffalo City Municipality. Didn't even see a draft of the minutes. Or oh, can we can we then leave the minutes because uh, I also didn't see them. Maybe we in tomorrow's meeting uh, we ask uh, for the slot uh, from the chairperson uh, just to adopt the minutes uh, of the fifteenth. It doesn't look like we have them ready now because uh, I also look uh, for the minutes of the fifteen on my laptop. I couldn't find them. No, no problem. We agree that we move no, here. All right. We agree with the proposal. Okay. No, thanks so much, uh, honorable members. At this stage, uh, then I would uh, uh, hand over to the leader of the delegation uh, from the DTIC. I assume it's uh, DDG uh, Fandrine. Am I correct? Chairperson, it is. Uh, I'm. Oh, in... sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't. I'm trying to read the names here. See the person who's a co host this is family. Okay. Uh, Ms. Fun. Oh, oh, Ms. Fun you, uh, th thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and good morning to you and to all the honorable uh, members of the select committee and all uh, everyone else on the platform this morning. And um, Thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to make this presentation uh, to the committee uh, today. Um, my colleague, Elizabeth Van Rienen is the co-host. She's going to uh, shoot the, uh, the presentation um, onto the screen. And so I'm going to work with her as we go through the, uh, 
uh, and deliver the presentation to the to the committee. Um, Elizabeth, can you uh, put the put the presentation up and we can get going. It's a it's a long presentation, Chair. Um, we managed to cut it back uh, to some extent, but we've got a lot to cover this morning. Um, yeah. I'll try to go through, uh, cover everything, but try to go through as quickly as possible and uh, leave uh, enough time for uh, discussion and questions at the end. Okay. Um, and as you said- I uh, think, uh, Ambassador uh, Karim, it will, it, it will be also more uh, uh, as a, information sharing uh, but also kind of uh, educative as well because it's a program that we have not uh, been dealing with uh, uh, directly and uh, perhaps uh, as you deal with some of the concepts if you can uh, also unpack them as well and uh, maybe some little bit of a uh, background uh, uh, you know to those uh, uh, concepts uh, for example, the I would say the the all, all those all the the terms uh, that uh, the, the 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 program deals with, especially the negotiations uh, that uh, uh, you are involved in as a as a department. Those those uh, terms uh, that like the ROO, you know, uh, their background, uh, you, you know, all, all. So it should be more of a uh, being educational also in nature as well. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Karim. No, uh, I'm happy to do that, uh, Chairperson. I'll, I'll I'll try to explain as we go along. If I miss anything, please uh, stop me and um, at any at any point, and I'll, I'll if I miss anything along along the way. Um, uh, Chair, as you mentioned, um, Deputy Minister uh, is not feeling well and had um, uh, submitted his, um, his apologies. So it's on his behalf that we are pre I'm presenting today. Uh, if we could just move through the next page, uh, Elizabeth. The presentation is covering some of the main international uh, engagements that we have uh, that are ongoing. Um, all of these are, are areas of work that are that are, are continuous in the de in, in in the department over over many years. Uh, but we've organized it in the following way to talk about uh, our African economic integration agenda. Um, and that work is undertaken in the Southern African Customs Union, uh, the Southern African Development Community, and the Continental Free Trade Area, uh, the AFCFTA. Um, so that's the first part of the presentation. We then uh, give a, then present uh, a, an update on where we are in terms of the ongoing engagements with the European Union under the EPA, which is the Economic Partnership Agreement. And we call it the SADC EU EPA. That's the agreement that we have in place. But in effect, it is an agreement between uh, the European Union, uh, South Africa, the other SACU countries, that is Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, and Eswatini, along with South Africa, but also Mozambique. Uh, and the European Union. Angola is still in the process of joining that agreement, uh, but that is the, the SADC EU EPA. Uh, we also have uh, an ongoing work in the economic partnership agreement with the UK, and that is the UK on the one side, and on our side, it is um, SAFU again, South Africa and uh, Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia and Eswatini plus Mozambique. We cover in the presentation AGOA, that's the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which is an arrangement that the US has, uh, the United States of America has um, implemented for more than almost, well, it's, a, it's, it's just about 21 years now. Uh, which provides preferential access for certain African countries to the European to the uh, to the U.S. market. Uh, 
Um, we then conclude the, organize, the engagements with, the, uh, with an update on where we are in our engagements with the World Trade Organization, the WTO. Um, and then we also added some points in here, Chairman, uh, which was in response to the request from the committee uh, that we talk about the functional policy mandate of the policy of the trade policy branch, the branch which um, I'm, uh, I, I work. Uh, some highlights of our trade policy, and here we're making reference to the trade policy statement that uh, Minister Patel issued last May. Uh, just give you the main features of that. And we conclude with uh, South Africa's trade performance over the last uh, few years, just to get a sense of how South Africa is performing um, in terms of imports and exports of goods. Can we move on? Uh, Chair, I should just also say that the first page of the, of the presentation has a lot of acronyms that are used throughout uh, the presentation. So if some of the acronyms that come up uh, in the presentation are not clear, um, uh, members can, can refer to the to page to the slide one, uh, which will which will explain uh, which uh, what are those acronyms, what do they stand for? So we start with the African economic inter economic integration on trade. Um, and uh, there are a few key points that we wanted to raise here. Essentially, the integration agenda, the African integration agenda uh, from an economic point of view is to try to overcome the developmental and growth limits uh, of being, of having 55 small economies in Africa. Uh, by combining our strengths and opening up our markets to one another, uh, there is an expectation that this will help to boost overall Africa uh, growth and development um, and by creating more integrated markets. Uh, one of the important um, considerations is Africa's trade amongst African countries uh, is relatively small compared to other regions, compared to the European Union, compared to Asian countries. The, to Asia compared to uh, the Americas. Um, it only accounts for about 16.3%. And these are the latest figures we have uh, over the period 2018 to 2020. So it's relatively small uh, as compared to other regions, uh, but African markets are very important to other African countries. So um, while overall it's quite small, uh, they still quite important uh, to, it's still important to each of us. Um, and the primary reason for that is most of our trade uh, is not in, uh, amongst ourselves are not in commodities, are not in minerals. Um, a lot of it is in oil, uh, but we don't trade a lot of the other commodities amongst each other. Our, the bulk of our trade amongst each other is in value added manufactured and agricultural products. Um, and that's very important from the point of view of helping, helping and assisting to develop our, um, our uh, processing uh, capabilities and helping us develop our manufactured uh, exports. Uh, out of total intra-Africa trade, of all trade amongst uh, each other in Africa, South Africa has a very significant um, component of it. We're, a, we're a, a important um, a trader in Africa. We account for 22.4% of total intra-Africa trade. Uh, this number goes up and down year to year, but it's almost a quarter of total African trade is accounted for by, uh, by South Africa. In terms of exports, you can see it. It's, it's, it's uh, clearer on the export side. 25.5% uh, of our total exports to the world, 25% of that goes to other African uh, economies. Um, the, again, the importance of that uh, is that out of that, 63%, 64.3% of our total exports to Africa are in manufactured uh, products, compared to just 43.9% 
in our total uh, exports. So in Africa, most of our exports are in value added manufactured uh, products, which is supports our, our industrial development. Um, if you exclude um, SADEC uh, and SAKU from, uh, from the total trade uh, in Africa, you'll see that our trade balance with the rest of Africa is still in a deficit. Um, so we import quite a lot. Uh, we, we import relatively more from the rest of Africa than we do from, um, than we export. Uh, and that's largely due to import of, of, of oil products. Uh, so we import quite a lot of oil from Angola and from um, Nigeria, and that accounts for a uh, for the large import bill for South Africa from the rest of Africa. What it means is that we run a trade deficit uh, in many years with the rest of Africa. But in SACU and in SADEC, uh, South Africa runs um, a, a big uh, trade surplus. Can we move on? Just a few words on the Southern African Customs Union. This is a customs union between South Africa, um, Botswana, Namibia, uh, Eswatini and Lesotho, so our immediate neighbors. Um, this is a long-standing arrangement going back to 2010. Uh, sorry, 1910, it's over 100 and, uh, 112 years now. Um, and uh, it's, it's gone through various uh, phases. We currently operate on the basis of a legally binding agreement with these countries, uh, which is under the, the SACO agreement of 2002. Uh, what the essential features of that agreement is that we have one tariff uh, for the entire region. So we all apply the same tax on imports from outside of SACU countries uh, to, to the region. There is free movement of goods and services within SACU. Um, and we also have a revenue sharing formula uh, as a, an intrinsic part of the arrangement, uh, whereby um, all the tariff revenues that are, are collected into one pool and then shared according to a formula. Uh, the agreement also indicates that we need to develop common policies um, and we have some common institutions all with the objective of trying to in, in, uh, promote further integration amongst SACU countries. For negotiations, from a negotiating point of view, uh, on the trading goods, uh, so where we're talking about tariffs uh, and negotiations to deal with tariffs and rules of origin, SACU has to negotiate as a, as a block. So we need common positions uh, in the negotiations, and that needs to be informed by common approaches to trade and related uh, issues. Um, for the DTI, we oversee matters related to tariff setting, uh, to tariff rebates, to duty rebates, to trade remedies for South Africa. But because we operate in the SACU uh, context, we, these also apply to the, uh, to the, to the region. Um, and of course, we are in ongoing engagements with the region to develop SACU common positions for negotiations. Uh, in an important development in 2020, uh, in August, uh, the SACU ministers, trade ministers agreed to a, to a, a more focused program of work to promote uh, industrial development across the region, SACU region, uh, and to try to develop more coordinated approaches to investment and export promotion. So this is a relatively new area um, and work continues on that. Can we move on? A few words uh, on uh, the Southern African um, development community. These are 15 countries, includes SACU members, but also countries in uh, 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 beyond uh, SACU into Southern Africa, the rest of Southern Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique, Zambia, uh, Tanzania, 
uh, Angola, DRC, etc., and Mauritius. So it, 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 it's bigger. There are 15 countries in that. And um, it's very, this agreement that we've had in the Southern African Development, um, uh, it's a free trade area. Um, it's been in place since uh, 2000. It, the agreement was fully implemented by uh, 2012. And it's very important um, region for South Africa's um, uh, trade. It accounts for uh, the importance of this for all Africa, for SADC countries, is that almost a quarter of the trade of SADC is done within the SADC uh, region. So it's a, it's a significant uh, trading block uh, and very important for each other. Um, and 87% of all South Africa's exports to Africa as a whole goes to SADC. So you can see from that figure, SADC is extremely important uh, for South Africa's trade with Africa. Uh, particularly for our exports. Um, as I've indicated, the agreement was implemented in 2000 and uh, tariff, uh, the, the market is very open um, in, in SADC. 98% of all products uh, as classified by tariff lines um, are open since uh, 2012. So trade uh, largely moves uh, very uh, freely across the region. Uh, there, I made a mistake. There are not 15 SADC members. There are 16. Um, we've had uh, one or two accessions uh, since it, it started. Um, Angola is the next country seeking accession to the trade aspect of, of this. And so it's a, that is an important market. Uh, Angola is a, is a big uh, economy in, in, uh, in SADC. And so that work is still uh, continuing on. Uh, I mentioned that we have generally very open markets in South, in, in SADC, and so uh, South Africa's exports are generally free in, in SADC, but there are quite often other barriers that emerge in the, in the trade arrangement. These can be related to customs, to permits, uh, to non-tariff barriers is the word that we use. Um, and, the focus of our work in terms of our trade in uh, SADC is to try to identify where there are trade restrictions on our exports that are not in compliance with the, with the agreement. The problem that we've been facing recently is we don't have an enforcement mechanism uh, because uh, some years ago there was a suspension of the SADC tribunal um, that would have allowed us to challenge some of those measures where they are inconsistent with the agreement. Uh, but in, in any case, we still uh, try to uh, have these addressed um, to support our exports. In addition to uh, the trade in goods, there is an agreement in SADEC on trade in services. There's a protocol in place. And we have been uh, implementing and working to uh, facilitate trade in services in six sectors, in the communication sectors, in construction, energy, financial services, tourism, and transport. Uh, that uh, services uh, trade protocol entered into force at the beginning uh, of this year. So this is the work that came after the full implementation of the, of the other uh, the trade in goods protocol. We can move on. I come to the African Continental Free Trade Area, the AFCFTA, and I think the, uh, all the honorable members uh, would be aware that this is a, a very important um, uh, initiative by uh, African countries to integrate the, the, the markets at the continental level. Um, and uh, the negotiations were launched uh, for the AFCFTA uh, in 2015, in June. Uh, 54 out of the 55 AU members have signed on to the agreement. 43 have ratified the agreement, meaning that they, uh, they have fully complied or they fully intend to participate in the AFCFTA. Uh, we've had, uh, at the start of the negotiations, we, we had um, an approach, uh, a sequential approach to the engagement where in phase one, 
We would focus on trying to get an outcome on trading goods and trading services. And then a phase two, which where we would look at investment, intellectual property rights, competition policy, try to get common approaches on, 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 on that. Um, there are other issues that we would deal with in future, but those were the two, uh, the issues that were, 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 were focused, um, were the focus of the initial phases of negotiations. Effectively, those two phases are now combined. We're working, we're continuing to work on trading goods, trading services, and we've begun to make good progress uh, in the other areas. Overall frameworks for the agreement uh, uh, have been agreed. We have an agreement establishing the AFCFTA. We have protocols on trading goods, trading services. We have a, a, an agreement on how to deal with uh, disputes that arise uh, covering these uh, things. Those are, those are in place, uh, but those are really the framework agreements. The operational aspect of it actually trading um, on, on the basis of uh, preferential tariffs, so uh, more favorable tariffs uh, amongst ourselves, that process uh, only uh, was started in July uh, 2019. And uh, it's a complex set of negotiations, um, and, uh, but nevertheless, uh, significant progress has been made uh, in that respect. Um, and probably the single most important uh, development, uh, I mean, this work is continuing, but the, the summit in December 2020, the, the, the heads of state um, uh, endorsed uh, an approach which would give a, a proper legal basis for preferential trade uh, amongst countries uh, on products, so long as certain conditions were met. That where countries had submitted a proposal on where they will reduce tariffs and where those proposals are technically correct, uh, where there are agreed rules of origin, and I took note of your, your request for clarification on the rules of origin, Chair. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and uh, where there is um, uh, the, the requisite domestic legislation in order for this trade to take place. So on products and among countries where all of these conditions are met, trade can, uh, preferential trade can start. Uh, maybe I should just pause there for a moment and clarify a couple of points here in, in light of your suggestion, uh, Chairman. Um, Preferential trade uh, amongst countries um, uh, takes place in the following way. Members of the WTO trade amongst each other based on uh, what they have agreed at the WTO. So they say to one another that if you import uh, or you export a good to my economy, this is the tariff that you will pay. So say it is a, uh, it's a car coming from the European Union to South Africa. They'll face a tariff of, of around, uh, normally they would face a tariff of, of around 30 to 40% uh, in, 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 in the market. Under a preferential arrangement, uh, they could get a tariff which would be lower than other countries. Uh, in the WTO. So the value of the preference is that it gives those countries that you have an arrangement with an advantage in terms of the level of, of tax that it will that will apply at the border to those uh, to those imports. That's the in, that is the, uh, the the importance of a preference. But also important is that for the for you to take advantage of that preference, you have to have agreed uh, rule of origin on that product. And the rule of origin is a measure of how much of that product is actually produced in the country from where the good is exported. So if we say that we expect that in order for the European Union to get the advantage of the tariff into South Africa for uh, auto, at least 
40% of the, and it could vary, it could be 60%, but uh, for, for, just for argument's sake, we could say that 60% uh, of that product uh, needs to be produced in, uh, in the European Union. So they can import, in making the product, they can import raw materials, they can input parts from other parts of the world, but at least 60% of it must be um, uh, so must be made in the European uh, Union for them to get the advantage of the tariff preference when they export to South Africa. And this is done for each and every product in a preferential arrangement. So it's extremely complex, uh, detailed negotiations, but it's essential to make sure that the products that are being traded actually come from those countries and that there's real production going on in those countries, that it's not a product that comes from somewhere else uh, and is simply shipped through that country to get advantage of the, of the preference. I hope that uh, clarifies it to some extent <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to explain further uh, as we move uh, through the rest of the presentation or at the end of the presentation. Can we move on? Elizabeth, thank you. Um, the focus on for operationalizing the AFCFTA on the trading goods, as I've said, are the tariffs, uh, which are the products that we agree that we're going to lower the tariffs on, um, and uh, what are the rules of origin. So the focus since 2019 has been on this. Uh, on these two main uh, issues. Um, and this is where the complexity of the negotiations uh, reside. Uh, so what we've got so far, the progress that has been made is out of the, I mentioned uh, the number of countries that have ratified the agreement, but a significant number, 46 have submitted tariff offers. 37 of those are complying with the technical requirements that are needed. Um, so that's a significant number of co countries that have made uh, good tariff offers. Um, now, in SACU's case, and I mentioned that SACU has to negotiate as a group, uh, we have to still identify 17 products uh, in order to submit our offer, because you have to submit an offer that covers at least 90% of tariff lines. Um, we are 17 lines short of making that 90% target. Um, and so the work is going on in that. Once we have completed those 17 lines, uh, SACU would be able to submit its offer. And that number of 37%, 37 countries should go up to 38 when we're included. And the work is continuing on that. In parallel to the tariff offers, we are working on rules of origin. Uh, as I explained, these are essential for granting those tariff preferences. And in this, we've also made very significant progress. Uh, if you look at the, the trading goods, there are in, at the total, uh, there are probably there are about 4,746 product lines that are, uh, are under negotiation. And out of that, 88%, uh, just over 88% of all product lines, we have an agreement on the rule of origin. We have an agreement on what percentage of the product, of each product, uh, needs to be made in the African country in order to get the benefit. So it's a really quite important um, uh, component of the negotiations uh, that we have agreed rules of origin, essentially to, to allow trade to continue, but also to make sure that the products that are being traded are actually made in Africa. Um, the difficult issues in making, uh, in getting agreements on this are uh, in sugar, uh, in clothing and textiles and in autos. Uh, many other countries want to import a greater portion of their sugar trade and their clothing and textiles and their autos. They want to have um, more, a, a greater, a, a lower percentage from Africa, a greater percentage from other parts of the world in order to benefit. And South Africa's approach is that we should be strengthening production in Africa uh, through this AFCFTA. So we have been uh, arguing for stronger 
uh, rules of origin so that the products are actually made in Africa and support African economic development. Uh, another very important um, issue in these negotiations is to strengthen the customs controls. Um, for similar reasons, we want to make sure that the benefits of the AFCFTA, of the preferences, um, are shared in Africa and are not simply products that are coming from outside Africa that are getting the benefit of more open trade in Africa. Uh, can we move on? Uh, so that's on the trading goods. We've also been working on trading services. And this is, again, also quite a, a complicated negotiating process. Um, we had agreed fairly early on that we would focus on trading services in, in uh, the following five sectors, finance, tourism, transport, communication, and business services. Uh, we are looking to identify the types of regulations um, that uh, would allow more service providers to operate across the borders in Africa. Um, and so far, uh, 47 countries have tabled uh, their offer identifying what is the regulatory framework for trade in these areas. And out of the 47, uh, 20 have been have been found to have met the technical requirements for that. So the work is slow. Um, but there is progress that is being registered uh, on that. Uh, South Africa, I should also just say, South Africa, in this case, on services, South Africa does not negotiate as part of SACU. Uh, we, uh, for services, we, we negotiate on our own as one, as one member. Um, we have submitted an initial offer. We are in the process of trying to um, uh, improve that offer. Uh, on the basis of engagements that we've had with other AFCFTA members, on the basis of consultations with um, relevant government departments in South Africa and regulators, as well as uh, NEDLAC and uh, and the um, uh, and uh, the service providers themselves, uh, there is a process underway where we will uh, table our improved offer, uh, and we're hoping for sign off. Uh, by cabinet uh, when it serves in cabinet. Uh, it could be the end, uh, before the end of this year, but perhaps it will be early next year. Uh, in parallel, we're also focused uh, now on the phase two issues. Um, we are developing uh, protocols that will enhance our cooperation in uh, uh, at the continental level on investment, on intellectual property and competition. Um, the initial frameworks have been uh, finalized in, uh, were finalized by uh, trade ministers in October at the Council of uh, Ministers meeting. Uh, there is a process, we're now preparing for a legal vetting um, in January to make sure that these are legally sound, that there are no mistakes, uh, legal uh, mistakes in the agreements. And the expectation is that these would be presented to the summit in February next year for adoption. Uh, just to say that on each of these areas, our mandate was based on South African policy, uh, South African legislation, and uh, whatever we put forward in the agreement uh, as part of our approach and whatever needs to be, whatever was taken up in the agreement was made in consultation with NEDLAC, um, uh, so with, with, with stakeholders in South Africa. Uh, the, uh, there's work um, that will start. We can already anticipate that there'll be work um, on uh, additional work that we'll need to start uh, preparing for on um, uh, protocols for women and youth in trade, as well as digital trade. Um, but that is for next year, but we were just signaling it at this stage. Can we move on? Um, I mentioned that uh, that we have an agreement uh, with the EU, the Economic Partnership Agreement. As I mentioned, it, 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 it is called the SADC EU Agreement. It's a bit of a misnomer uh, because it's not does not include the whole of SADC, all the 15, 16 SADC countries. It's essentially an agreement between SACU countries, including South Africa, with Mozambique, 
and it uh, and has the possibility that Angola could join uh, in future. That agreement, um, we had a, a bilateral agreement with the Europe with the with the EU that goes back to to uh, 1999, uh, but that agreement uh, was superseded by this EPA agreement, and the EPA agreement has been enforced since 2016, um, which now in encompasses all of the uh, the countries, uh, well, the SAPU countries plus Mozambique um, uh, in this arrangement. Um, uh, there's a point here that we've made, uh, I think, well, maybe just before I move on to that, so the SADC, this SADC EU EPA agreement has been enforced since October 2016. It is the legal basis for our trade with the European uh, Union. And for South Africa, it's very important. The EU uh, as a bloc is our single largest trading partner. So it's a quite an important um, a framework. Uh, it's an important agreement, which we spend a lot of time um, and effort trying to, to make sure our trade uh, increases. Um, in September 2018, this is for information uh, for the committee, uh, SACO countries uh, uh, imposed a, uh, a safeguard measure, which is essentially uh, new tariffs against EU um, imports of chicken from the European Union. Um, in effect, uh, the rapid increase of EU imports of chicken were posing threats to the domestic in, uh, to the domestic industry, and we responded by uh, the safeguard measure, which is an allowed. Uh, it's permitted in the agreement. It's permitted at the WTO to protect your domestic industry from surges in imports. Uh, the EU responded by challenging that. Uh, in 2020 by initiating a challenge, arguing that there was no, that we had not followed proper procedure, that these were not in compliance with the agreement uh, on a range of issues that they, that they identified as being problematic. But the outcome of that um, was largely in favor of SACU. Um, the two key uh, requests from the EU during the, uh, during the uh, during the um, during the arbitration was that SACU should remove the safeguard measure and all the duties that they had that the exporters had to pay or imports that they pay should be refunded um, and the the arbitration panel uh, rejected that uh, that is by way of uh, just an update uh, on that 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 matter is now behind us um, and um, uh, just goes just to show that um, uh, some of the dynamics in the engagement. Currently, there is a review of the agreement. Uh, it's been uh, five years, more than five years since the agreement is in place. We'd agreed that after five years, we would review the agreement to see how it's working. Are there any things that we want to do to improve it, et cetera? Um, so that process of reviewing the, the, uh, the, the, the 2016 agreement is underway. We've identified uh, a number of areas that we want to um, see improvements on, including on rules of origin to make it easier for us to export. Uh, there are certain provisions in the agreement that deal with export tax and other issues of in improving our market access to the EU. We want to see um, improvements in that. So at, the point we're, at this point, we're simply indicating areas of interest. The EU has indicated its interests in developing rules on investment, competition, intellectual property, also on sustainable development, um, uh, particularly uh, to collaborate in areas of climate and trade. Uh, so these are issues that we would engage with the EU in the, in, in, in the coming period. Uh, there are some very specific issues that we have um, uh, very di uh, direct uh, economic interests now with the EU, which are also on the basis of ongoing discussions. It's our citrus exports to the EU, uh, particularly orange exports to the EU. I'll come back to this later in the presentation. Uh, we want to see uh, improvements in uh, access in game meat, in aquaculture, horses, steel, and chicken from South Africa to the EU. So these are areas that are 
uh, 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 part of ongoing engagements. We can move on. Very briefly, um, the this is the EPA with the European with with the UK. Um, as uh, the members would know, uh, UK left uh, the 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 EU uh, effectively uh, from the first of January 2021. As being part of the EU, ordinarily our trade with them uh, would have fallen under the EPA agreement that we just spoke about. But as they moved out of the EU, we had to construct a new agreement with them, effectively the same commitments that we had with them under the agreement we had with the European Union, we now have with them separately. Um, uh, so there, uh, similarly, we have a we, we have that agreement in place. Trade has, has continued uh, seamlessly. There was no disruption in our trade when the, when the UK left. Um, and that was the key objective of negotiating this agreement. Um, but we also have agreed with the UK that there are a number of issues uh, that we need to follow up uh, uh, follow up on uh, under the built-in agenda. Uh, there are some uh, health and safety uh, related to um, to agricultural products, some te technical barriers, issues that are related to industrial products that we want to see ways of uh, facilitating trade, and that these do not come barriers do not become new barriers to trade. Uh, again, we've identified a number of areas that we would like to see improvements on in terms of the limits on our exports of particularly uh, fruit and vegetables and agricultural products, export tax provisions, and improved market access to the UK as part of this ongoing agenda. A few words on, uh, on the agreement, uh, well, on the arrangement that the US has in place for Sub-Saharan, certain Sub-Saharan African countries, um, the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act. This is not an agreement in the same way as we have agreements with the European Union or the UK or SADC, uh, in the sense that it is an it's an arrangement that the US provides unilaterally. They do it as an act of Congress, uh, which provides certain African countries. Uh, preferential access um, to to the U.S. Uh, to the U.S. market, um, and uh, the U.S. has um, a much bigger, in terms of the number of countries that it provides this type of preferential access uh, under what they call the general system of preferences. Uh, but for southern, for for uh, African countries, sub certain sub-Saharan African countries that meet certain uh, requirements, they give they add on top of GSP, they add additional products, and this falls under the and all of that falls under the AGOA um, uh, Growth and Opportunity Act. So it's a very uh, generous offer from the U.S. to sub-Saharan African countries. Uh, and the AGOA was very useful in particular to South Africa for the first 10 years, um, uh, first 12, 13 years of its operation, um, where our exports increased uh, significantly to the US during this period. Um, but since 2013, we've seen a decline. Uh, the other very important thing about AGOA is a lot of the products that are included in the AGOA additional products are in value added manufactured products. So we saw uh, big increases in South Africa's uh, auto industry exports, um, uh, lots of cars going to the US uh, for, a, for a long period. Um, but since then we've seen uh, significant declines in, uh, in our exports under AGOA. And, some of this has to do with uh, just general uh, decline in economic performance in, in around the world, including in the US. Um, we've also seen increasing restrictions on our imports to the US in a number of areas, uh, particularly steel and aluminum, but a few others as well. Um, and uh, so there's been a decline in the value of AGOA but it still remains uh, very important uh, for, for, for South Africa. 
Um, we've given some figures in 2020 and 2021. Uh, you see in the change between 2020 and 2021, significant growth, almost a doubling of growth uh, in our exports in those years. But those are primarily uh, mineral products. Um, uh, and the minerals that we export to the, it's exported to the US, the price of those minerals also uh, spiked over that period. So the value of our mineral exports to the US uh, were quite high um, in, uh, in those, uh, in those uh, years. So what we're seeing now um, from last year's data is that fully 72% um, of our exports to the US are in minerals and, 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 and metals. Um, and uh, these dominate our exports uh, to the US. The other important point to bear in mind is the AGOA itself uh, has a, a shelf life. Uh, it will expire uh, as it, uh, its current term, it will expire in 2025. Um, and we are beginning to coordinate amongst ourselves in, Southern, in, in, in Sub Saharan Africa engage with the US uh, to see to what extent we can, uh, whether or not what the possibilities are uh, to extend uh, to extend that. So this slide just outlines the kind of the work that's going on now. Um, we want to see AGOA extend, uh, this is sub-Saharan African countries, we have a common position uh, and we've been articulating this repeatedly in, in, in our engagements with the US administration. Uh, that we want to see AGOA extend beyond 2025. We would like it extended for an ex we want it extended for a significant period of time. We'd like to see more countries, uh, African countries, included in the in the program. Um, and we've also identified a number of non-tariff barriers uh, that um, uh, uh, should also be could also be removed and help to expand exports from Africa to the U.S. We've also indicated that um, we would work, not want to see uh, some countries that could be considered to be uh, middle income countries uh, or more developed developing countries uh, excluded uh, or graduated out of uh, AGOA. South Africa could be one, Botswana could be another, Mauritius could be another. There are a number of countries um, that uh, could could face such a uh, graduation and uh, uh, or exclusion, in fact, uh, that uh, we would want to uh, want to discourage uh, that. For the U.S. part, um, they have considered previously. Uh, it's not entirely clear whether or not this is being pursued as vigorously as it was, uh, but the U.S. had been indicating for a number of years that they wanted to enter into free trade agreements with uh, individual uh, African countries. Um, we have been uh, warning that, the, that by trying to negotiate with individual African countries could undermine the integration agenda that we're trying to achieve on the AFC FTA front, where we're trying to build an integration agenda amongst African countries. So uh, that's one, uh, one concern that we've expressed. We've also expressed concerns that the US free trade agreements uh, are very, very um, comprehensive. Uh, they require extensive commitments to open your markets uh, to across the board, uh, to lower tariffs to zero um, in agriculture and industry, but also to open up your government procurement uh, to make commitments in services, in digital trade, in intellectual property and investment. And many of those proposals don't fit in well with the kind of economic development agenda that many of us have in Africa and certainly in South Africa. Um, and so that is a, an issue uh, for us. Uh, we've expressed this uh, in our engagements with the US um, uh, whenever, whenever these matters come up. Uh, for interest also, um, the committee should be aware that uh, South Africa has agreed to host the next AGOA forum. Um, this was supported by uh, other sub-Saharan African countries more than a year ago. 
Um, and the US has also endorsed it. So we will host in 2023 uh, in South Africa. Uh, the, all the logistics and preparations for that are, are beginning now. Um, and we hope to use that forum to influence the future direction and content of AGOA and also of the future of Sub-Saharan US uh, trade and investment agenda. We move on. <laughs> Chair, I'll come to, I'm coming now to the WTO, uh, our work in the WTO, and um, we've got your MC12 outcome. MC12 simply means the 12th ministerial conference. Uh, there have been, uh, th th this ministerial conference was held in June this year in Switzerland. Um, it is the 12th because we have um, ministerial conferences. Generally, we have them, uh, supposed to have them every, uh, every two years. Uh, there was a gap because of the pandemic. Um, it was difficult to travel at the last scheduled uh, meeting. And so uh, with some delays this time around, the last ministerial was in June uh, this year. Uh, just some high level issues is that the multilateral coordination and cooperation is really under quite a lot of stress in this recent period. Um, COVID uh, pandemic itself caused a great deal of disruption. Uh, but we've also seen the impacts of growing inequality across the world. We've seen uh, growing poverty in many regions of the world. Uh, more recently, we've seen a spike in inflation. Um, and we've also uh, having to all deal with uh, greater and greater impacts of uh, climate change um, and uh, across the world. And so all of this is leading to many uh, economies rethinking the approach to international trade and to globalization um, and recognizing the importance of preserving policy space of governments, uh, preserving the space to pursue industrialization. Um, and we are seeing this type of uh, um, policy changes across the world uh, in increased in subsidies uh, to support industrial development, uh, many unilateral measures uh, countries are taking, sometimes not in line with WTO agreements, um, and uh, all to try to address the current, uh, the current uh, challenges. Uh, so that is just kind of the, that was the context for the 12th ministerial meeting uh, in June. Now that meeting um, was in some respects um, uh, quite successful in reaching agreements in a number of areas, uh, maybe not as ambitious had been, as had been originally uh, anticipated, but there was a partial, there was a decision on TRIPS, um, a, a, a waiver on some patent protection aspects of the TRIPS agreement to try to deal with the uh, with the with the pandemic and access to uh, vaccines, there was a partial agreement on fisheries, uh, disciplines on subsidies for fisheries. There were some rules that were agreed on export restrictions um, to 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 minimize export restrictions in order to uh, promote food security. Um, there was an agreement to extend uh, a, a moratorium on customs duties under e-commerce um, and to reinvigorate the work program at the WTO on e-commerce. Uh, and importantly, there was a broad political agreement to pursue WTO reform. Those were the main outcomes. With a little bit more detail, um, the TRIPS decision um, as an outcome of that meeting and um, uh, members would be aware that South Africa and India played a leading role in trying to uh, push this decision forward. We had enormous support from across uh, the developing world, um, uh, including all of Africa, um, other parts of the developing world, uh, uh, enormous support from civil society across the world, 
uh, to get an outcome, uh, uh, a, a TRIPS waiver uh, on um, agreed at the WTO. In the end, the outcome was not as ambitious, as not as wide ranging as we had uh, uh, hoped, but the agreement does affirm the right of any member to authorize the production and supply of uh, vaccines that have patents on them, including the ingredients and processes that go into making them, but without the authorization of the uh, patent holder. So quite an important reaffirmation of, um, um, of, of, of that right. Uh, that members can also use any legal instrument to authorize such production and supply. Uh, we'd asked for a, a much more wide ranging waiver covering many areas, uh, but in the end, what was agreed was that the waiver uh, was limited to certain conditions attached to compulsory licenses for vaccines, and it left open um, the possibility to extend that to therapeutics and diagnostics, a process that is underway uh, now. We are, well, we should be. Um, the, the, the outcome says that we need to get an agreement on whether or not to extend this by December this year. Uh, those negotiations are ongoing. Aside from what is going on, on the, at the WTO level, it's very, very important that, the, that these kinds of flexibilities uh, on intellectual property are also included in South Africa's domestic legislation. Um, so that you could give effect to those flexibilities at the national level. And so in this case, um, we have a patent bill um, that is being prepared and will be submitted to parliament uh, at, um, at, some at some date, hopefully uh, not uh, too far in the future. Um, and that should include uh, the, the TRIPS flexibilities. Um, the final point on this slide is simply the declaration that was agreed at the ministerial um, uh, conference in June uh, on pandemics. And the essential uh, objective of that declaration is to initiate a process to start to prepare for future uh, pandemics. There is a real concern that this is just the first of pandemics uh, uh, of more pandemics to come, and rather than being caught uh, responding uh, after the pandemic breaks, um, it's to try to be proactive uh, and, uh, to, to, to that risk. Can we move on? Um, the, there was an important outcome on fishery subsidies agreement. Um, this is uh, was an attempt to discipline the subsidies that countries provide to their uh, to their fishery sector and to fishing companies um, that can lead to overfishing um, and depletion of uh, stocks. So the objective was to try to discipline the subsidies that governments provide in a number of different ways but that all lead to the depletion of, uh, of fishing uh, stocks. Um, uh, it, again, we didn't, get a compl we didn't get agreement on all of the elements of the, of, uh, of, of, that have been under negotiation, but we were able to get agreement on some. Uh, 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 and uh, they, the agreement essentially now, what we have is a prohibition uh, members cannot provide subsidies to vessels or operators that may be engaged in illegal or unreported or unregulated fishing. Um, that's one. Uh, subsidies are prohibited uh, for fishing uh, where fishing stocks are already overfished, uh, unless those subsidies aim to rebuild stocks to sustainable levels. And uh, you prohibited, members are prohibited from providing subsidies to fishing in unregulated high seas. Um, for this agreement to come into force, uh, you need two thirds of the WTO membership to ratify. So that is a process that is 
uh, needs to continue. The two thirds means uh, more around 110 WTO members have to ratify the agreement uh, to bring it into force. So that's a, a process underway. Um, and um, in parallel, uh, negotiations will continue to address subsidies that contribute to overfishing and overcapacity, which was uh, one of the elements that had been uh, we were not able to get agreement on. That work will continue. Um, and as it continues, we'd also need to look at um, special and differential treatment uh, for developing countries to allow them to provide subsidies. Uh, generally, uh, many developing countries, particularly in Africa, want to support their industries and they are not contributing to the depletion of global stocks. They are not big fishing. Uh, they don't have big fishing industries. Um, the final point on the slide is just to say um, that the agreement that uh, needs to be um, uh, not only brought into force, but if, if these uh, outstanding agreements uh, or elements are not agreed, uh, the, uh, the agreement could um, uh, be terminated. So there is some pressure to try to conclude this last um, uh, outstanding area. So we move on. Agriculture and food security was an, is an issue uh, that always um, is in the WTO, uh, but the agricultural negotiations uh, uh, create very deep divisions between, um, between, between members with very different interests in the negotiations, and it's uh, very difficult to get agreements uh, coming out in this area. Uh, for most developing countries, South Africa included, most African countries, uh, we would want to see um, uh, policy space to allow governments to provide um, for stockholding uh, that supports their, their poor farmers and supports um, uh, uh, poor people uh, access to food. Um, a number of countries have programs in place for this, so they would support that. Uh, we also want to see the, uh, the, 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 the massive distortions that, uh, the, that are created by support provided by developed country farmers uh, reduced, uh, particularly in the EU and the US, uh, Japan and others. Um, and we'd want to see um, uh, more effective uh, instruments to deal with uh, damaging imports um, through a special safeguard mechanism. Uh, so that's on the one side. The other side, uh, members want to see further opening of markets. Um, and of course, that, that creates a, a, a very big tension in, in the negotiations. What came out of this uh, engagement uh, was much more uh, modest, um, uh, in, in terms of an outcome, but uh, not unimportant, uh, is simply to encourage members to avoid implementing WTO inconsistent export prohibitions or restrictions on food exports, um, uh, particularly for uh, humanitarian uh, purposes. Um, and where you do implement uh, these, they should minimize trade distortions, be temporarily targeted, uh, transparent, and pr proportionate. Uh, we can move on. Um, on e-commerce, there was an agreement um, uh, coming out of MC12, uh, essentially to restart and reinvigorate the work program on electronic commerce. Uh, particularly to focus on its development dimension. Number of issues are being uh, considered there, uh, how you classify electronic uh, goods and tra electronic transmissions, uh, new technologies um, and what they mean. Um, so there's a lot of technical work and clarification work going on in that respect. Uh, the ministers also agreed uh, to continue the practice of not imposing any tariffs on goods uh, that are, are transmitted electronically um, until the next ministerial meeting or by um, March, 2024. Um, and uh, they would terminate unless there's an agreement to extend. 
Um, and so the work in this area continues. We can move on. Uh, there are some members that are trying to negotiate rules uh, in this area amongst themselves. These are called, um, uh, it's, it's, it's what they call uh, the Joint uh, Statement Initiatives, the JSIs. Um, it's a, a much smaller group than the WTO. It's about 70 members out of over 160 uh, members that are trying to negotiate rules uh, on e-commerce themselves. Um, but uh, there's still uh, significant divergences, but that work is continuing. South Africa has not uh, participated in this because we're quite concerned about the fact that it is not a it's not a mandated agreement uh, negotiations. Not every member has agreed, um, and we see this as a problem. Uh, not not only the substantive issues of negotiating rules as one issue, but systemic issues in the sense that. Um, this is not a fully multilateral uh, approach to the WTO. We see this as, as quite um, problematic. We can move on. The final uh, decision um, uh, area that we'll cover is, the, uh, is an agreement at the ministerial to start to work on what types of reforms the WTO uh, could undertake, and many members have, uh, have 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 called for the for for reform. But the, but what we want each of us want to see is not always the same uh, in that reform. What was agreed in the WTO is that we will start this process. Uh, there's an agreement that it should be member driven. That uh, members need to take responsibility. It needs to be an open process, transparent, inclusive and must take into account the interests of everyone. Uh, for us, we've articulated this repeatedly. We want to see changes in the WTO that allow for our, in, that give more space for African industrialization. There are commitments that have been made previously. Uh, we call these mandated issues, such as public stock holding, that, we, that uh, there's a commitment, there was an undertaking to, to deliver on these. We want to see those uh, follow through on. Uh, but we want to also preserve the main principles of the WTO, uh, particularly its multilateral character, rather than seeing it fragment into smaller uh, groups. There's an issue that is uh, of considerable importance to all members, and that has to do with the dispute settlement, which is a critical element of the WTO rules. Um, rules are only um, effective to the extent that they can be enforced and the, the dispute settlement is the mechanism to enforce it. That has been disabled uh, since 2018. Um, uh, and primarily due to US concerns on how the, the mechanism has been operating and particularly some of the rulings of the appellate uh, body. So there's ongoing discussions on how to uh, resolve, uh, resolve that. Can we move on? Uh, we have been concerned about the WTO reform because we want we, we see that, that if the DS if the dispute settlement mechanism is not resolved, we could see a return to the pre-WTO era insofar as uh, outcomes of disputes are not dealt with in a uh, in a dispute mechanism that provides for due process, but by negotiations between uh, countries uh, bilaterally. And where you have a dispute and there's a small economy, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a large economy, uh, then power dynamics uh, come into play. Uh, we're also concerned, I'd mentioned this about the JSI on e-commerce, we've been concerned about agree agreements among smaller group of members um, and being trying to refer to these as the, make these WTO agreements, even though not all members are, uh, are participate in that, uh, in the negotiations, we see that as fragmenting the trading system and undermining multilateral underpinnings of the WTO. We've been concerned about proposals that could make it more difficult to support industrial development in developing countries and also make access to technology more difficult. 
um, and some of the flexibility that is currently provided to developing countries. Uh, we see that there are proposals to tighten those up and make it uh, more difficult for developing countries to, to participate effectively in the system. So these are some of the, the main issues of uh, around, around uh, WTO reform. Um, if we could move on, I know this is going on quite long, uh, Chairman, and um, uh, it is a, a lot of issues to try to cover. We put this slide in, um, uh, Chairman, um, it is the uh, FCM dispute that we've had with the, Europe, uh, with the European Union. This is false coddling moth, which is a, a pest infection on our citrus. Um, which the EU has raised concerns of. We we have these um, uh, this these type of pests uh, on the um, on citrus from time to time. There are very low incidences of these in our exports to the EU, um, but the EU has begun tightening up its regulations to prohibit. Uh, and to make it um, uh, to what they, from their point of view, they're saying it's to ensure that there's no FCM infestation on uh, citrus imports from, uh, from, from the world, uh, but this affects South Africa with one of the main exporters to the EU uh, of citrus, uh, particularly oranges. The regulations that the EU is requiring uh, are very costly. They require massive refrigeration capacity, uh, would require a massive investment in refrigeration capacity, uh, which we think is not, um, is disproportionate to the risk and very expensive uh, for the uh, for South African exporters and makes our exports that much uh, less competitive in the EU market. Uh, we've seen this as as a, a number of as one of many efforts by the EU to restrict South Africa's exports um, of citrus um, uh, to the to the EU. So we've um, we've raised this as a concern at the WTO. We don't believe that the uh, the measures that the EU has imposed um, are entirely WTO compatible. We've raised this as a dispute. Um, that process was started, but in the interim, there have been uh, discussions, bilateral discussions between the EU and South Africa to see whether or not we could find a, um, a solution to the issue that meets, um, uh, meets the concerns of both sides uh, uh, and avoid uh, going through um, uh, the WTO process in future. Those discussions are also continuing but to the extent that those are un, um, uh, have not been concluded, the possibility of a um, of, of, of a dispute at the WTO uh, is uh, is still there. We thought we should just signal this to the committee. Could we move on, uh, <laughs> Chair? I think uh, this part of the presentation is on, on the functional mandate of our branch, um, the, the trade policy branch. Um, and I think you've already, in, in, in the presentation that I've made, you've got a good sense already of what we do. We negotiate and manage trade rules at bilateral level, at regional and multilateral level. Uh, we are trying to enhance South Africa's um, uh, access for our exports to foreign markets. Uh, we have to negotiate these, so we also have to provide access to other countries to our markets. So we have to find the right balance in those negotiations so that we don't undermine our domestic industry. We don't undermine our employment, uh, but we all, and we also want to maintain our policy space uh, for, to support development. Um, we have to, traditionally we focused our work on uh, trading goods, but increasingly we have to look at trading services, investment, intellectual property. Um, and we have a major interest in uh, the African um, integration agenda uh, and a developmental integration agenda. So those are the main functional issues. I, I think to some extent I've, I've covered this in the presentation. Can we move on? Um, 
The following few slides are kind of are sort of providing an overall orientation of our trade policy. Um, I'm not going to go through this because I think it is essentially that our trade policy aims to support our industrial policy. Uh, the importance of industrial policy and its integration to trade is now uh, accepted around the world. Uh, I've mentioned the importance of our continental integration agenda um, and um, our approach to the WTO. I've mentioned uh, I've mentioned that is to to get a better balance in the rules and the policy space to pursue industrialization. Can we move on? Uh, I wanted to. I think we could just draw the members' attention to the trade policy statement uh, issued by Minister Patel uh, in May 2021, um, which sets out this at a at a broad level in in some, but also provides some important detail. Uh, the objectives are around building industrial capacity, uh, and this is with respect from a trade perspective that we need to make sure that we build industrial capacity, that our trade policy is, is, is fully aware of that, that we focus on making sure uh, the interests of workers, women, and communities are included in that process. If you could move on. Uh, that we unlock the development potential across Africa, that we drive manufacturing exports for South Africans, um, South African goods, and that we enhance South Africa's role at the WTO and in the multilateral trading system. And that we also uh, focus on building back better after the, uh, the, the, the very negative impact of the, of the, of the pandemic. Uh, the, the, the trade policy statement um, uh, is available and if there's an interest, we, it could be uh, uh, recirculated. Uh, there is a, uh, a section in the statement on the digital economy um, of trying to deal with not only the, uh, the challenges, but also to seize the opportunities that are arising out of that. Uh, and also on environmental sustainability and the importance uh, of dealing with the, the linkages between environment and trade. So all of those elements are uh, identified in the uh, in the trade policy statement. Can we move on? The final couple of slides, uh, Chairman, and I'm drawing to a close now. Uh, it's just some observations, overall observations on our trade uh, figures. Um, uh, in 2021, 1 1.8 trillion rands worth of exports, uh, 1.4 trillion rands worth of imports into South Africa. And so we run a 432 billion rand uh, trade surplus. Uh, sometimes this is in deficit. Uh, there are many years it, it can be in deficit. Uh, it has to do with the prices of imports, the prices of exports, whether or not we expand our exports uh, more significantly than imports. So it varies from, 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 from year to year, but we have the last few years we've been in surplus. Um, and our share of world trade uh, goods has increased uh, recently, uh, going from 0.4, 0.5% in 2020 to 0.55% in 2021. So it's a, it's a, it's, it looks like a small percentage. It's significant for us, but of course, this is in global in global terms. Uh, this is just looking at the, what is it that we're exporting? Um, the value of our manufactured exports increased from 470, uh, 471 billion rand in 2020 to 578 uh, billion rand in 2021. Uh, so we are increasing our manufactured exports, but our metal and minerals export has grown much uh, uh, faster. But this is not, necessarily, I mean, this is not primarily in terms of the quantity and volumes of exports, not as if we're producing much, much more than we have in the past. It's largely a result of the increase in prices um, um, uh, of, of those mineral products. Uh, so uh, South Africa is still 61% of our total exports 
uh, 60, almost 62% of our total exports are still minerals and um, uh, minerals and metals, uh, and around uh, just under a third of our exports are manufactured products, um, and a 6.2% agricultural products in 2021. I think that brings me to the end. Uh, it's a long presentation, uh, Chairman, and um, I hope uh, the members uh, found it useful. I hope uh, it's not been too long, uh, but if there are any questions um, or comments, I and my team that is with me would be happy to, to try to respond. Thank you very much, Chairman, and thanks to the committee for its attention. Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ambassador Curry. Uh, us a, a, a great deal as a, a members of the committee because uh, as you know that uh, when we uh, says see message just says my uh, internet is unstable i hope i can still be at uh, it's help us uh, when we deal with the app's you'll find this uh, a program too um but we uh, as is normal with uh, the app's they are more uh, high level uh, but uh, we have now received the, the details. We have had the opportunity, particularly on the uh, WTO, uh, to get a kind of uh, induction or workshop uh, uh, by Trelac. Uh, they actually started uh, uh, from the formation uh, of uh, uh, WTO, uh, starting from uh, uh, when it it was a, a gut, and they took us through up to 1994, where it was then uh, the WTO was formed, uh, including uh, uh, the the MC12. Um, so members uh, at least uh, have an idea uh, about uh, the WTO, uh, the negotiations, uh, where there are challenges, the disputes. Uh, uh, and all that because uh, uh, we had a, a workshop. Then what uh, the areas that uh, you 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 touch on are around uh, the African uh, economic integration, starting with the uh, SACU, um, the Southern uh, uh, African uh, Development uh, Community, uh, the African uh, Continental Free Trade Areas. Um, so there we did not uh, had uh, it. So this is uh, really uh, helping us. Can I suggest uh, that uh, Ms. Farin, oh, very good. I was going to ask if we can uh, uh, take off the the presentation uh, from the screen. I see the, there's hand uh, from uh, Honorable Dango. Uh, there are two ambassadors on this platform, Ambassador uh, Karim and Ambassador Dango, and uh, followed by Honorable Boshoff. Uh, in that order, please. Honorable uh, Dango, Ambassador Dango. Ambassador Dango, can you unmute? Please unmute. Oh, okay, let's take honorable uh, push off in the meantime. Honorable, Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very yeah. much, Chair, and good morning to everybody. And apologies for not switching on the video because my internet connection is also not very stable. May I firstly say thank you very much for a very good presentation. I really enjoyed it. I only have one question that I would like to ask, and that has that relates to our citrus export. We um, The present touched on the fact that they are in dialogue and discussions and engagements with the EU and the WTO, and hopefully with the Spanish um, government as well. Coming from a province that exports a lot of citrus, as well as my neighboring province, namely Limpopo, which also exports a lot of citrus. I'd like to know what we as South African government will do 
in the event that these negotiations and discussions and dialogues do not work out favorably for us, how are we going to adapt to the possible fact that these imports, exports could be stopped? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, eh? Honorable Boshoff. Um, Honorable Dango, are you back? Yeah, yeah thank okay. you very much, Chairperson. It is when you sit in the village, you have challenges yeah. uh, with connectivity. Uh, Chairperson, the question is the life of AGOA. Are we intending to renegotiate uh, AGOA and take some of the, the negative aspects of AGOA? such as the dumping of chicken fee, uh, chicken stock into South Africa. Are we going to look at that? Or are we going to let the Agoa thing just go past and let its, uh, its time go by? Are you done, Honorable uh, Dama? I'm done, Chairperson. Oh, okay. No, thanks very much. Uh, are there any other hands, uh, honorable members? Uh, maybe then before you respond, uh, uh, Ambassador Karim, uh, just on the issue of uh, the EPA, um, I think you, you, you mentioned it briefly, because uh, I'm a bit worried about uh, uh, to what extent uh, can they undermine, particularly uh, the African free uh, uh, continental, I mean, continental uh, free trade areas and the agreement that are reached there. Uh, to what extent, if uh, the APA, especially with uh, um, countries uh, outside Africa, uh, to what extent can they uh, undermine the, the whole process of uh, African economic integration? Uh, uh, also on AGOA, um, I know it is in the form of a carrot. Uh, I just want to know about the stick. Um, I, I remember when the former President Trump uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, wanted to put South Africa on the line and then threatened uh, that uh, it won't be considered for the AGOA. Uh, so, I just want to know generally what is a stick uh, with regard to um, Agoa. On the WTO, the, I don't know why uh, the General Council or Ministerial uh, comes, uh, Conference would allow this uh, joint statement uh, you know, by some countries who want to negotiate outside the, the, the forums uh, that, that are there uh, uh, for negotiations. Uh, my worry is that why is it, uh, the MC or the General Council don't do anything about it? Why is it part? It should now be forced to be part of uh, uh, the negotiations around the, the World uh, Trade Organization reform. Um, uh, with regard to agriculture, the the stock holding, uh, can South Africa get involved, uh, especially? Last week we had a, 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 a seminar uh, where members of the National Planning Commission, uh, the state uh, South Africa, um, and, and, and other uh, uh, panelists uh, came to to present. Uh, uh, state South Africa uh, uh, talk about uh, the challenges of poverty uh, in South Africa. In fact, they are increasing in terms of the states that they were presenting. I was just thinking uh, whether South Africa should not also uh, consider this, the stock holding um, uh, so that uh, government can buy uh, and uh, then distribute on to the poor uh, in particular. Uh, I think Honorable Boshoff uh, uh, touched on the issue of uh, the, yeah, the citrus, because I was because this has been going on for, for some time now. I, I hear that you say that uh, the uh, discussion are still underway. Uh, uh, how long will this uh, negotiation uh, uh, be taking place? Uh, yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman, and thank you to the uh, to the committee members um, for really for very uh, very good questions. Um, uh, let me do my best to try to respond. Um, Honorable Boshoff mentioned uh, the importance of uh, citrus exports for the province. Um, uh, and of course, uh, this is South Africa is a major export of citrus uh, uh, globally and one uh, probably the number one exporter to uh, yeah, the number one exporter to the EU. Um, which is a, a, a big market, a very important market uh, for, uh, for, 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 for South Africa. Um, we, of course, uh, there are, there are um, producers in the EU, particularly Spain. There are some other uh, less uh, large producing countries in, uh, on, on the Mediterranean or uh, the Mediterranean uh, uh, coast of, 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 of EU that produce um, uh, oranges, but uh, Spain is the main uh, producer. Uh, so we are concerned that that the measures that they've been implementing are essentially, or there is a, a very high risk that these are not necessarily aimed only at dealing with the risks of, um, previously it was the black spot uh, concerned and we had to try to respond to the EU concerns about black spot, but now it's the uh, false coddling mark uh, in uh, the risks associated with that. Um, our concern has been that these are not necessarily based on real risks or risks to the extent that uh, the EU is claiming and that these have a protectionist element to them. Uh, and are trying to keep uh, South African exports, which are very, very uh, good oranges, um, well liked. Uh, they're also competitively priced um, in the EU market, and this is a way to try to give some degree of protection. Uh, on so that is uh, that's part of it. Is that we don't we we want to try to address uh, that that if they if the EU wants to take measures to address uh, the risks that these measures are proportionate to the risk and not um, uh, imposing such requirements that are going to impose enormous costs on South African producers and exporters uh, to the point where our exports to the EU start to diminish and start to uh, become uncompetitive. Um, so uh, the negotiation is trying to find a, in, in respect of the, FCM, the false coddling market, the negotiation is, is trying to respond to the risk that the EU uh, is articulating, but trying to uh, find a way to do, uh, to respond to it in a way that doesn't impose overly high costs on, uh, on, 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 on South Africa. We're hopeful that uh, we could find a solution uh, to this. Um, the negotiations are ongoing now. We want to try to resolve it as soon as possible. Uh, there are possibilities of resolving it. I think it's, it, it, it remains an open discussion. But I think Honorable Boshop was, was asking, uh, what would the South African government uh, do in case that we were not able to resolve uh, resolve um, uh, this. Uh, there are some things that can be done. I imagine uh, there could be a certain degree of support. The ind industry itself is making enormous efforts to try to strengthen its, uh, minimize, uh, strengthen its, the measures that minimize the risk of FCM. <laughs> Um, and so those efforts would continue and the South African government could, could perhaps find ways of helping, to, of finding ways to support those efforts. Um, but ultimately, depending on the nature of the measures that the EU impose, if these are not scientific, if they are disproportionate, if they have not followed the rules that are set out in the WTO in terms of how um, the the measures come into place, uh, whether or not everyone has been consulted, the timing of all of these things. Many of those uh, challenge may can be challenged under the WTO uh, rules. 
Um, and so as a final resort, if we were unable to get an agreement that uh, uh, everyone believes is uh, we can live with, um, then, the op then the option of pursuing a dispute at the WTO remains open. Um, and of course, we also have a, a dispute settlement in the EPA agreement itself. So uh, that is another option that could be, uh, could be pursued if uh, the WTO option is not. But as it stands now, we've pursued it um, uh, we the 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 the, the, the dispute uh, has been lodged at the WTO and so it's on the books there, uh, but we won't move. We don't need to move forward on that uh, with the expectation that perhaps we could uh, still get a, a mutually acceptable outcome uh, in the bilateral discussions with the EU, which are ongoing. So we'd have to cons consider. Uh, uh, I think the focus is now trying to get an agreement. Uh, we'd have to consider the options uh, depending on the outcome of these consultations. Um, I hope that goes some way to answering that uh, question. And then Honorable Dango raised uh, the importance of um, AGOA. Um, and the I think the the only the negotiation that we had with the with the U.S. Uh, the last time was really just around the quotas uh, that uh, the anti-dumping measures against the U.S. have remained in place. Um, uh, the quota that we agreed would be exempt. And that was the negotiation that we had with the US in 2015. Um, and it was the demand of the US to have a quota in order to get the support uh, for continuing AGOA and con continuing South Africa's participation in AGOA in 2015. 20, 2025 is around the corner. Um, this issue has not emerged as a, a matter for negotiation. Uh, the agreement um, is premised, uh, the, the quota that we offer the US is premised on the AGOA being in place. Um, every year there's a percentage increase in the, uh, the quota. It's a small percentage, but it is a percentage increase on an annual basis. That has been uh, implemented. So on our side, that agreement remains in place. Um, and this issue has not come up about um, uh, reviewing the quota. Dumping is a, uh, remains a tool in every country's um, policy box, uh, the toolbox. So if there is evidence of dumping of any product, uh, the domestic industry can um, apply to ITAC, the International Trade Administration Commission, uh, to, um, to apply duties. It has to go through a process. It has to be properly considered. And if there is, in fact, uh, dumping and there is injury to the domestic industry, dumping duties can and have been and will continue to be uh, applied. Um, but so far, this issue has not um, uh, come up in our discussions uh, thus far. Uh, Chair, you asked a number of questions, also really very, um, very, very uh, pertinent questions on the EPA um, and the impact of the EPA on Africa's integration. We've raised this um, and continue to raise it as an issue uh, the integration agenda of Africa will be constrained uh, by the different, not simply the fact that you have EPAs, which is one problem, uh, that we have EPAs with, with Europe. I mean, South Africa is part of one EPA with Europe. It's not only impeded by that. Uh, what it means is that in some cases, the European uh, Union uh, exporters have greater access to our markets uh, then we have access to each other's markets. So that's, uh, that's a, a problem for our integration agenda um, uh, in and of itself. But the other uh, significant problem is that the types of agreements that we have uh, separately with the European Union are different. 
So the agreement that we have in SADC, uh, the so-called SADC EPA with the EU, is different from the, the East African uh, one and is different from the ECOWAS one, and it's different from the agreement that the US, EU has with Egypt or with North Africa. So this fragments our trade relations with a very important third part, pa party, and it creates certain, in some respects, it creates certain barriers and challenges in our integration uh, process. So one thing that we have articulated is that uh, there should be a kind of a rethink of the IPAs uh, in future. Um, it's a very difficult proposition, again, a very complicated negotiation because there are established trading patterns and rules between different countries and the European Union. Um, it makes it very difficult to do that, but it is an issue that requires uh, attention and ongoing efforts to try to resolve the problems where they where they uh, where, where where they've arisen. Uh, this is something for ongoing uh, work. Um, on your second question, Chairman, regarding Agoa, uh, the carrot, uh, and you're asking more about the stick. Um, this is how uh, some of these um, arrangements uh, in, in effect work. Um, the stick is sometimes uh, has been largely used uh, to, um, to put pressure on countries to meet some of the other requirements, the non-trade requirements of AGOA. Uh, so if you, uh, in order to be eligible for the AGOA, first of all, it's limited to sub-Saharan Africa. So it doesn't include North Africa, which is kind of, again, a, 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 something of a creating a division between North Africa and sub-Saharan Africa. But within that, for countries that don't meet certain requirements, such as uh, what the US would term good governance or human rights or labor rights or um, uh, certain interpretations of those, uh, they can exclude uh, certain countries. So for instance, Eswatini um, was, has been threatened uh, and has been uh, removed from time to time uh, because of its uh, human rights and, 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 and uh, democratic uh, what the US would see as democratic shortcomings from being eligible for the AGOA uh, program. Uh, so the stick can be used in that way by denying the preferences uh, to their market. Um, it could be denied, it could be the stick could emerge as a, a decision to uh, graduate certain countries from AGOA. Um, I mean, if it is a, 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 a straight decision that if, you, if your country has reached a certain level of per capita income you remove, um, it may be not a stick, it may just be a, 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 an attempt to uh, remove more competitive countries from uh, trading with uh, or exporting preferentially to, uh, to the US. Um, so it, it, it can be used as a stick, um, but so far the type of arrangement and engagements that we've had with the US um, have been trying to find out how we strengthen Angola uh, in a way that it delivers uh, more um, for African countries. It's not entirely clear what that would, kind, would, would look at. This is not only, this is not even a primarily a matter of engaging with the uh, the U.S. executive, the administration, uh, they're very important players in this process, uh, but um, ultimately it is a decision by Congress, uh, by the House of Representatives and the Senate on whether or not to extend AGOA, um, and then it would be um, in, in, uh, as their, as their, under their authority, whether or not it, AGOA remains the same or there are adjustments made, whether all the countries continue to participate or some countries are left out or other countries are brought in. So this engagement that we will have with them, including at the forum next year, uh, will be, uh, we'll discuss uh, many of those issues. Next year is 2023. 
Um, the AGOA is uh, due to run out in 2025. Uh, in between, there'll be another election in the US. Um, so Congress could change again. It's likely to change again. Uh, so all of those factors need to be taken into account. But in the meantime, we're developing our approach as sub-Saharan African countries that benefit from AGOA to continue it, uh, to continue it and to, to, to see how it can be strengthened. But we don't negotiate these. Uh, this is a negotiation amongst, this is with the US, but it is, um, we try to advocate uh, for, 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 for that. Um, on the question of the joint statement initiatives, those initiatives have never been endorsed by the General Council. Uh, they've never been endorsed uh, by the ministerial conference um, as a whole. Uh, they have been, certain countries have started that. Uh, they articulate it as if it is a WTO agreement, but the, the reality is, legally speaking, um, for an agreement to be brought, for a, for an, for a WTO negotiation to be um, WTO negotiation proper, uh, it needs to be endorsed by all countries, by all members, either at the ministerial level or at the general council level. Um, and so far, these have not. So there's a bit of a, uh, a sleight of hand in this. Um, very often you, you, you hear, uh, doc, you talk about documents being produced that are the WTO, JSI on electronic commerce or on investment facilitation. But strictly speaking, legally speaking, these are not um, WTO negotiations. And uh, we've raised our concerns repeatedly at the WTO that these processes will fragment the system. Um, you'll have any group of countries agreeing to negotiate and others have problems with that. Uh, and if this was allowed, the system would simply fragment into, uh, into, in, into the, that you need consensus. So, it's a discussion that will continue. And when we talk about the reform process, uh, I'm sure this issue is going to be uh, one, of the, uh, one of the issues that uh, come up. On agriculture, uh, and the question of public stockholding, as you've raised it, uh, Chairman, I think the way I would uh, respond to that is that South Africa doesn't have any public stockholding programs itself. Uh, we don't we don't implement that, but what we may decide in future that we need it, in particularly in light of the points that you made, rising poverty, rising food insecurity, uh, more and more people going hungry. There may be some uh, reason or rationale for implementing that. Uh, that would be decided by uh, the sector itself in consultation with government. Uh, on whether or not these programs are appropriate in South Africa. I don't have a, a view myself on that. It could be something that is considered to be uh, important. What I think is, for, from our point of view, what is important is that we have the space at the WTO, the policy space at the WTO, to be able to take those types of decisions. That if we decide that it is in our interest to do it, that the rules at the WTO permit it. And right now, the rules of the WTO are quite constraining in this respect um, and would make it very difficult for countries uh, trying to implement these programs in future. Um, many other African countries, uh, India is a very good example of another country that has very effective uh, public stockholding programs in place, um, both to support their subsistence farmers but also to provide food at, um, at low prices for the poor people in urban areas. Um, and they are leading it with a number of other countries in Asia and uh, a number of African countries leading this discussion. I think it's something that is important for us to also uh, pay close attention to. Um, and then I think your last question was on the citrus. Um, I, I think I may have covered that already, Chairman. And, um, so let me uh, stop there, and uh, uh, I hope I, I don't know if there are any further questions, but uh, thanks very much. 
Thank you so much, Amos uh, uh, Karim. Um, I think at this stage we'll leave it at that uh, because I also see the time is uh, just two minutes uh, after 12 and the buses to parliament will be leaving at uh, half past 12 uh, to allow honorable members who are on the platform to make uh, preparations uh, so that they are at the uh, bus uh, uh, stops. Uh, to be picked up. So we will leave it at that at this stage, but we will continue to engage uh, on these uh, matters, especially when we we meet uh, with the department, when there's a presentation of uh, uh, all its program uh, in the APPs, uh, post, I think probably uh, February, March uh, uh, next year. Um, I say thank you very much uh, uh, for coming and uh, uh, clarifying uh, some of uh, uh, these matters, uh, uh, especially uh, in Africa, SACU. Uh, I, I was also confused about the difference uh, between SACU and uh, I mean, the South African Custom Union. What is it that it does? Uh, what is it that is done by uh, the South Afri Southern African Development Count? Uh, uh, a community, you know, what is the difference? So you, you've been able to to, to clarify uh, uh, those aspects. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and honorable members, uh, due to time, uh, I think we will uh, have to leave it at that. Um, we will continue. I've just been corrected that uh, the minutes uh, that uh, um, Mr. Pazia was looking for were the minutes of the eighth and not the 15, because the week of the 15, we were in the program called uh, Taking Parliament to the People. Um, so we'll then tomorrow uh, find a slot uh, on tomorrow's meeting uh, to, to adopt the minutes of the 8th. Um, but also we will be briefing the, the members as we were briefing them about the, the International Study Tour uh, that has been now uh, 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 cancelled. Uh, it will be uh, briefing the, meet, the meeting tomorrow about uh, the way forward uh, with regard to the uh, international study tour. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, last day, uh, any questions? Otherwise, I would like to thank you uh, for attending the meeting and also for your participation. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Uh, see you this afternoon uh, in Parliament. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, bye, Chair. Bye. I was worried to I thought that maybe uh, the network is there. Uh, Recording uh, stopped. Hearing with me. Thank you, Chairman. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chief. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. <laughs> bye.